Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. My name is Elizabeth. I'm with the San Diego County Bars Lawyer Referral Service. And today's um, area of law is medical malpractice. It's a very popular one. We get a lot of calls through the Lawyer Referral Service for this. So I want to thank our attorney um, for being here today and for uh, sharing her time with us. I'll go ahead and pass it on to Michelle for introductions, and then we'll go into the first question. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Chavez. I'm the Director of Public Services at the San Diego County Bar, and I'm excited to introduce Noelle Webster. I'm going to pass it on to you to um, introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. My name is Noelle Webster. I'm an attorney with Thor Snace, Bartolotta McGuire, and I specialize in medical malpractice and catastrophic personal injury claims. Wonderful. All right, so I'm going to ask you um, the first question. Um, why would I need to hire a medical malpractice attorney? That's a great question. Um, to state somewhat the obvious, if you suspect you've been a victim of medical malpractice, you should absolutely contact a medical malpractice attorney. Um, one thing I think people wonder pretty often is, do I specifically need an attorney that specializes mainly in in medical malpractice, and I would say that you do. Um, some people have a family friend or know of someone who does car accident cases and trip and fall cases, a personal injury attorney, and they may be wondering, could they handle my medical malpractice claim? But specifically, we really recommend you seek out a medical malpractice attorney that has the experience and the specialization in that area because it is such a complex and unique area of law. All right, thank you. And what are the different types of medical malpractice? Um, some of the people that call the lawyer referral service ask specifically, for example, for dental malpractice. Um, what, uh, you know, there could be negligence during a surgery or negligence just, a, a, you know, a, a, a nurse or something like that. What, what are the different types? Yeah, so I'll sort of address that question in two parts. Um, first, you can have a lot of different types of medical malpractice cases depending on the healthcare provider that's committed the medical malpractice. So the most common is that you'll have a claim against your doctor, um, but you can also have claims against nursing staff, physician's assistants, different sorts of hospital technicians, such as respiratory technicians or scrub technicians. Um, as well as physical therapists, skilled nursing facilities, rehabilitation facilities. So that's one way you can have a lot of different types of claims. Um, and then as you alluded to, you can also have a variety of claims in terms of the actual error that was made in your treatment. So some of the common claims that can happen are with a failure to diagnose, um, the failure to properly administer prescription medications, um, lack of informed consent, birth injuries, unfortunately, are common. Um, and, and those are some of the more common types of medical malpractice we see. Okay, great. So what's the difference between medical malpractice and medical negligence? Is there a difference? Is it the same That's a thing? great question. Yeah, we get asked that really frequently, and they are the same thing. Um, medical malpractice and medical negligence are generally defined as uh, care that's deviated from the standard of care and resulted in an injury, but they are the same thing. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay, and uh, next question. Is there a statute of limitation for medical malpractice cases? And if so, what is it? Yes, there is. And it's really important to note that it is one of the shortest statutes of limitations in California. So it's really important to be aware of. Um, if you suspect you've been a victim of medical malpractice, you should contact attorney, an attorney as soon as you suspect that. Uh, the statute is one year, generally. There are some exceptions to the statute. Uh, uh, the main one being what's called the discovery exception, which tries to account for the fact that you may have no idea you've been a victim of medical malpractice until much later after the injury has occurred. 
Um, again, that's a complicated exception. There are additional exceptions outside of the discovery exception. So again, the bottom line and the thing I want to emphasize is if you suspect you've been a victim of medical malpractice, you should contact an attorney as soon as possible. So if someone is past the um, statute of limitations, can they go and pursue a case through either as a personal injury claim or a civil or a civil claim? Or is it just- That's another great question. Yeah. Well, my apologies for interrupting. No, go ahead, go um, ahead. That's another great question. Um, and a really common source of confusion. And unfortunately the answer is no. Um, okay. That's a smart question to ask because the personal injury statute is longer than the medical malpractice statute. But if you've got a medical malpractice case, the one year medical malpractice statute of limitations will be the one that controls your case. Gotcha, okay. And what type of medical malpractice cases do, do you see um, are mo the most common? Yeah, so sort of going back to the earlier question, um, delayed diagnosis is one of the more common things we see. Someone comes in suspecting they may have skin cancer, and you know they're told for whatever reason they don't, and it actually they did all along, and the doctor should have had reason to know that early on, and so it's now progressed to a later stage. That sort of thing, um, prescription medication errors. So someone goes in for a surgical procedure that's routine, and they're not given their aspirin or their blood thinner, and they suffer a stroke or a heart attack. Um, surgical errors such as foreign objects being left inside the body cavity or the wrong side surgery being, um, you know, done, uh, and then birth injuries. There can be a variety of things that can unfortunately go wrong, um, during the birth of a child. So those are unfortunately common too. Um, we get a lot of calls about, um, dental procedures or plastic surgery, you know, things that are not required, but they're elect, you know, like something that you would do, you know, possibly like a nose job or, um, you know, some sort of improvement to your body. Is that, is there cases that attorneys handle regarding those, um, those types of issues, or is that something like they don't? Because we, a lot of attorneys don't handle that, those type of issues. Yeah, they're definitely less common, um, but I'll, I'll give everyone's favorite lawyerly answer. It definitely depends. There are certain situations where it can be appropriate and you can have a case. So that's the sort of thing that you need to sort out um, with a, an experienced medical malpractice attorney. So it just depends on the, the matter and the injury and that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And so what was promised by the physician? Okay. Okay. Um, I had a gentleman call me. He went, he, I guess he has Crohn's disease and he had all this um, acne or the skin problems on his back. And he went and they told him that they could help him and they guaranteed him 80%, you know, satisfaction. He went in and had all these procedures and he got worse. Would that be something um, mm -hmm. that would um, an, a medical malpractice doctor could handle? Yes, absolutely. Um, that sounds sort of like it may be a lack of informed consent sort of situation uh -huh. um, or just over treating, um, over promising. Sometimes that happens where a physician promises more than any physician could promise. And in that situation, that would also be medical malpractice. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good to know. Um, so what do I do if, you know, let's say myself or a family member, um, a doctor misdiagnoses me, let's say, um, you know, common thing is, you know, I've got, I'm just going to use a situation, you know, constant pain in my, my intestines or in my bladder and they're, and they treat me and they say, you know what, you're fine, you're better. And I, then I become terminally ill with cancer, bladder cancer, or, you know, some sort of cancer, can I, do I have a medical malpractice claim um, in that instance where they kept treating me maybe for a stomach infection or something like that, or a bladder infection, and it actually turned out to be, it was cancer and they didn't catch it. 
Yes, it's possible. Um, you definitely need an expert to review to see whether or not the physician pursued the right testing and ruling out the right things in accordance with the standard of care, but it's possible. Um, and it's important to know that if you become terminally ill as a result of medical malpractice, um, your spouse and or your children can pursue a claim on your behalf, even if you pass in the process. And in addition to that, um, your attorney can also move for preference for your case, which essentially means that it asks that you're asking the judge to fast track all of your court dates and help you try to reach resolution sooner to try to consider the fact that you may pass in the process due to your illness. So there's a number of different things that attorneys um, that are specialized in medical malpractice can really help you do to address that specific situation. But you have to do it within that statute of limitations, correct? If someone passes away. Okay. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a, so a lot of, we have medical malpractice attorneys on our service and a lot of them won't take mm -hmm. a case unless it's high dollar because it's expensive because you have to get witnesses and this mm -hmm. kind of thing. What would be just like a standard, um, you know, would it be a certain dollar amount, a certain type of injury? How how would we know what's the best type of cases to send to an attorney, a medical malpractice attorney? Maybe not a broken arm or something, but you know, maybe they what would be the difference? You know, that's a really, really tough question to answer because different attorneys handle it very differently. Okay. Um, and in addition, fortunately. MICRA has now changed. So the previous limits on pain and suffering damages, uh, uh, pain and suffering damages used to be capped at $250,000. Those caps have now changed and they'll continue to change every year and go up. So that means cases that may not have made sense for either the client or the attorney previously because they may not have um, made financial financial sense may begin to make financial sense now. Um, so that's a really tough question to answer okay. right now. And I'd say people should reach out um, and explain their specific circumstances to see. Okay, good, good to know. Is there anything else that you'd like to share um, with the public? You know, should they have, um, what items should they have ready when they come to speak to an attorney? Um, what would help them, um, you know, be more prepared when they come and talk to you or call you regarding a claim? Yeah, you know, I, I actually, I find um, that a lot of people stress that they have to either have a second opinion in hand or they have to have all of their medical records in hand before they contact an attorney. And I actually sort of recommend the opposite. I recommend you contact someone as soon as you suspect something has gone wrong and give them the information you do know, because they can often help you get your medical records and get you that second opinion that you need much faster than you'd be able to get it for yourself. And because the statute of limitations is so short, it's really important that you have someone knowledgeable involved helping you and being mindful of that. So I actually think um, just reaching out to someone as soon as you can is the most important part. Okay, great, great. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for this great information. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Liz to share um, information about the lawyer referral service. Yeah, thank you so much for your time and for everything you've shared today. Um, for anyone out there that does need a medical malpractice attorney, um, you can contact the Lawyer Referral Service with the Bar Association. We're open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And um, you can also reach us through our 24-7 portal on our website, um, the San Diego County Bar website. I will uh, put all of the information in the description box. Um, and thank you so much for watching. And thank you again, Ms. Webster, for doing this. Thank you so much for having me.